Now it's time for the third and final part of our solution. And that's actually the part that I found the most tricky to wrap my head around. So we've got these final two metrics here, and it's all about the most recently played games. So we want uh, the wins and losses for the 10 most recently played games. And then we also want the losing streak or the winning streak that a team is on. So if we go back to our solution, we're going to go through this bottom bit here. Um, and the first thing that we're doing is we're going to restructure our data because if you remember this data at the moment, it's a row for each match and you've got uh, the winners and the losers side by side. We want to pivot our data basically um, so that we then have um, a row for each team and whether the date that that team played on, they won or lost on that day. So to do that, first step is just to make sure we have our date and our time in one field. So we're just going to change it from being two separate fields to a date time format. And we did that last in last week's challenge, if you want to check out the solution for that, if you struggle with it. But this is how we end up. We've got our date time and it's all contained in one field, which is great. Um, we've just used a similar formula to before to calculate the winner and the loser of each match. And then we're going to group by the winners and just group by those dates. So we're only keeping the information about who won and similarly only keeping information about who lost on that day. And we're just going to label the winners with a W or the losers with an L and union those back together. So that's effectively pivoted our data. We can see we've got double the number of rows as before and we've got so each date will have, you know, each date time will have two rows associated with it and the winner and the loser of that match. So then to label um, each of these dates um, or each of these matches as the most recent, we're going to use a similar logic to what we did in the first step um, where we were ranking. So we're basically going to be ranking the dates now instead. So we create this empty cleaning step, drag it back to join it to itself again. And this time we're going to be having that date there as being less than or equal to. Um, in the join condition. So that means that our most recent date, for example, is going to have only one row associated with it, whereas other rows are going to have lots more. So if we see the logic, we can see it almost happening here in the little preview um, of how the data is shaped. So we can see that down here at the bottom, our most recent date is only going to have like two rows associated with it because it's got the winner and the loser of that match. And we want this to happen for every single team individually because uh, the most recently played game for one team will probably be most likely be different to every other team because teams don't play at the same time exactly all the time. So we're just going to aggregate up. So we're going to group by our team, group by that date, group by the win or loss and count the number of rows. So we can see that for um, each of our dates, we've got each of our rankings, sorry, of our most recent um, field, we've got 30 rows associated with each of them, which is great because each team needs to have a number from 1 to 30 of the, of the um, sorry, from 1 to however many games have been played, from 1 to 38 of when their most recent match was. So that's great that now we've done that. That makes calculating our last 10 games actually quite simple. So um, we're going to filter out any game that was longer ago than the last 10. And we're going to then, we don't need that field anymore because that's all the information that we need. Those 300 rows, 10 games for each team. Um, and then to count that, we're going to, instead of an aggregation this time, we're just going to use a pivot. So we're doing rows to columns to make those wins and losses our new columns. And we're just counting the date. So counting how many games were on that date. Uh, sorry, counting how many rows there are, you know what I mean. So then all that's left is to formulate the L10 that we're looking for, how many of those last 10 games were won, how many were lost. And that's great. We can see as well here, for the purposes of calculating our winning or losing streak, that in our last 10 games, nobody's won or lost all of them. So actually, we can only, we can remember that um, for the purposes of calculating our streak and know that we can do a similar thing here where we're just going to filter out um, to only 1 to 10 uh, in order to calculate our streak because nobody's on a more than 10 winning or losing streak. 
we're going to pivot it so that this one to 10 means that for each team, this is the result of when of their most recent game, their second most recent game, their third most recent game. And then we're just going to use a pretty horrendously long if calculation to work out the streak. So we're saying that if our first column is not the same as our second column, then we're going to have uh, whatever's in the first column and a one. So if we're looking at the second row there where that's true, then we've got this first column is a loss, but the second column is a win. So the streak at the moment is just a loss of one. And you can see how that works. It's literally just doing exactly the same thing. I'm going to copy and paste this formula, which I'm not recommending is the best way to solve this, but it is a way uh, and it works for this challenge. So to save you having to go through the pain of writing that out, I will be leaving that just below the video for you. And then all we need to do with all our different uh, metrics is do a lot of different joins and join them all together. Um, so we've got a join there to join those solutions, some joins over here. And then finally, we've got all of those that we need and we just separate them out into Eastern and Western for our different outputs. And finally, that long challenge is completed. So I hope that helped and I hope you enjoyed. So thanks for listening.